In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how we can crop and use the pan and zoom option. Let's go ahead and import our footage. I'm going to go ahead and use stuff from the stock media tab. Go right here, come down to Pixabay to get some high quality videos. Uh, make sure you're on the video tab. This is photo, this is video. You can search for a certain video if you want, but I'm just going to go ahead and select something random. Like this video over here, it's going to warn me about the resolution of the video. Hit OK and it will start downloading. I'm also going to get this video where we have a subject in the center so we can use the pan and zoom option for this one. So I have two videos. Let's hit the plus icon. Hit the plus icon. I'm going to match it to media so we don't lose quality. So I'm going to add this onto my timeline. This one is... Let's take a look at the quality here. Right click, properties. All right, this is also high quality, so when we use the pan and zoom option or when we crop, we're not going to lose that much detail. So let's take a look at our first video. I'm just going to zoom out from my timeline by grabbing here, you can see. Or you can use this icon, zoom out or zoom in. I'm going to zoom out from mine. Select your first clip and right over here we have this crop icon. Go ahead and click that and we get the crop and zoom panel. So basically what the crop panel does, right now we're in crop, this is the zoom panel. In the crop panel, we get to get rid of certain areas of our video and only keep a small segment. The segment is determined by you. You can either, you can either freely create a box or use one of the predetermined ratios. So right down here, we have ratio. You can just click on it and there's some predetermined things like a one by one, which is a square. And then I can just grab the square and maybe get only this bit or get this bit. We have other dimensions as well. We have the 16 by 9, which is the original ratio. But we have 4 by 3 right here. You can just use it to go around. We have 21 by 9, which is meant for cinematic scenes. This is great if you have like black bars at the top and bottom. Then we got 9 by 16, which is perfect for Instagram stories, Reels, TikTok, and platforms like that where you want to get a long shot. So no matter which one you choose, uh, you can choose any of these. You can grab the corners here and adjust the size of this box. So choosing the ratio keeps the width and the height of your box linked to one another. So if I just grab one of the corners here, you can see they're kind of locked in one place in terms of their length and I'm just able to change the size of my square. Maybe bring it and just get this boat. But if I were to go to custom, these uh, the width and the height is no longer linked, meaning that I can just grab the corner and create some weird uh, shapes for my video, which could come in handy if you want to get a specific area without wanting to get the rest. But then you want to make sure that the uh, platform that you're going to put this video on can support your new ratio and dimension, which you can see right here. If I grab the corners, you can see the numbers are changing because we're changing the width and the height of our video. You can also type in any number that you want. Maybe you have something in mind. I'm just going to type in 1920 by 1080. And then I'm going to get, I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to get this uh, box, which again, I can make it larger or smaller, but my uh, width and height is linked to one another. Remember that these are ratios and not uh, dimensions. So I'm going to go back here, scene by nine. Even though this is more than 1920 by 1080, the ratio is still 16 by nine. So make sure that you choose the right ratio for your use. And uh, usually if you look up the platforms that you're going to upload this to, they'll tell you which, uh, what dimensions your videos need to have. I'm going to stick with a square for this lesson because I just want to get this boat. Going to just make it a little smaller. And we have this plus here, which is the center of your new video. So you want to make sure the center is on the main subject and not somewhere else and whatever is grayed out means that it's not going to be in your new cropped video to make sure the uh, stuff you want to keep are over here and not over here. I'm just going to put it right here. You can also grab the slider and just look through the video. If you have a moving subject, you want to make sure that it stays within your box. 
our subject isn't moving so i don't need to worry about that but if you did have a subject that was moving you want to make sure that it stays within the box at all times i'm going to stick with this and i'm just going to hit ok so now my video has been cropped this was the original i'm going to make a new video track and just put it on top so we can see the difference this was before turn off the visibility this is after same video but we are seeing it from a closer uh, perspective and it just looks really different i'm going to go back to my then turn off the visibility then go back to my crop panel if at some point i changed my mind i can still come back in here by hitting that just make sure you're choosing the right video and i can come back to just change my box. Maybe I just want to go back to what I had, so I would just change this to original ratio or just hit reset, which will go back to what my video had. So you can always just come back and change things. Let me just make something like this. Hit OK. If I change my mind, I can click that video again, go in here, and just bring it back. It's that easy. So that was how you can use a crop panel. It's really simple. And it's great because you can always just go back if you change your mind, it's nothing permanent. Now let's take a look at how you can pan and zoom. So I'm going to use this video for the pan and zoom. You can see we have a subject. This video is still as well, we're not moving. I'm going to try to find a moving subject next. Let's try this. Turn that off. Maybe the ducks will move in this video. You can see they're kind of moving. So I'm just going to get this for another example. Over here we have a subject that is not moving, but here we have uh, ducks that are moving. There we go. So let's go on this video, select the video, go to crop. You can also access the crop and zoom panel by right clicking and then going up to crop and zoom. There we go. So we're getting the same panel. Doesn't matter if you go from the right click or from this icon. Now let's move from the crop panel into the pan and zoom panel. So it looks different. And see we got this extra box and a start and text so basically pan and zoom not only allows you to crop but it allows you to zoom into a second location so basically these two boxes we have this one labeled start the red one and then we have this one it's kind of bluish it's labeled end so basically what this means is that my first uh, frame is going to be start it's going to be a regular frame such as this and then by the end of my video, this is the screen we're getting. So this little box. I'm going to move it a bit higher. Once I select end, everything else in the start is grayed out. And we're just going to get this at the end of our screen. I'm just going to bring it back to where it was. I'm trying to match the plus with the red one. We just hit reset actually. Hit reset and let's go ahead and play this. So you can see we're slowly zooming into our second screen. This is great when you have a subject like this, so you can slowly zoom into it, maybe put some music in the back. And by the end of the video, people will just be staring at these really beautiful flowers. That's how the pan and zoom works. It's a great tool. And let's learn how we can work with this. So similar to the crop panel, we can choose our ratio. Right now we're, we are on the original ratio, which is what our video originally had. But again, you can go for square can go for a vertical shot, cinematic one, or a 4x3, or just type in something you want. Uh, let's go to, okay, so we have this tiny box now. You can just type in whatever you want. I'm going to reset mine. And we also have these options down here. We're going to take a look at these in a second. First, let's uh, learn about the boxes. So similar to the crop panel, you can grab one of the corners with your ratio set. If you want to keep the width and the height uh, linked, you can just grab one end and just change the size. You can see the width and the height is changing as well, just like the crop panel. But if I want to do it in a more free way, I can come down to custom and just change things up. Maybe make a weird shape. And select on this. And yeah, I'm going to determine what my audience is first going to see. So let's say, I'm going to go to original ratio. I just want my audience to see this bit. Let's bring it in the center. I'm going to select this. Try to bring it somewhere nice. So whatever's not grayed out, so these areas are not going to be in my first frame. This area is what my audience is going to see. 
So that's my start box. Now my end box, I'm going to click on it once and now start is grayed out, meaning that I'm just working with my end box. For my end box, you can see the red plus is a bit higher than the end box because the box, the blue box is coming a little lower than the red box. So I can grab this and maybe make my final screen this. Remember, if it's grayed out, it's not in the video. But I can just maybe grab one end, again, setting original ratio for this. I'm going to move my start, click on it again, go back to my end and get a nice little end screen for my audience. So this was my start screen, whatever's inside this red box. This is my end screen, whatever that's in this blue box. You can see we're moving this way to the end. At the start, we're here and then we're slowly making our way up here to see this box. Let's hit OK and take a look at how that works. I'm going to go back to the start, hit play. You can see very slowly we're making our way from our start box to our end box. And uh, if it's a bit too long for you, you can always adjust the speed. We'll get into that soon. But you can see how we went from our first box to the second box in a really slow and smooth manner. Let's go back to pan and zoom and take a look at what these options are. So over here, this icon is where you get to flip the position of start and end. So it would be end start. Let's click it and see start is now this box end is this box. If I play this back, it's going to start from here and it's going to zoom out. So it would be the opposite because previously we were zooming in. Now we're zooming out. And I did that by swapping the places. And then we have another option here, which is basically going from here to here. You can see the arrow sign is going from the right to the left. If I click this, we're getting this. So the start box is here and the end box is here. Let's play this. So it's like going from the right to the left. And I was able to create this with a single click because this preset is set right here. There we go. It's looking pretty smooth. And let's take a look at the opposite, which would be start end. So we're moving from the left to the right. Just click this going from the left to the right. Let's go back. Play this. We also have a preset for zooming out. So let's click this. So the start is here and the end is here, which means we're zooming out from uh, the center of our frame, which is here. If I play this, let's go in the beginning. We're zoomed in and then we're slowly making our way out from the original frame. So that was another preset. And then we have the opposite, which is zooming in. So if I click this, this is our start, this is our end, meaning that we're going to slowly zoom in towards this plus icon. Let's play this. We're zooming in really slowly to our um, towards our flower, just like that. Again, if I select any of these that I'm not happy with, I could always just hit reset and go back to the original uh, positions of my pan and zoom. So just grab the uh, blue box and bring it a little higher. So we can get a nice end screen You can see position A, position B. There's an arrow telling us which direction we're going to. Now, if I play this back, it's going to slowly make its way to the flower or the box that we uh, determined. I'm going to skip to the end and there we are. All right. So let's say this is a bit too long and just want this to happen a lot quicker. It's going in really slowly. It's just taking a lot of time. Basically, pan and zoom works uh, directly with the length of your video. So this video, if you right click the properties, it's 19 seconds long. So pan and zoom will automatically be 19 seconds long. If I shorten this, go back to my pan and zoom. I'm going to leave the box as it is, and I'm just going to play this. You can see how quickly it's making its way to the second frame. So if you want this to be longer or shorter, you would have to change the duration, uh, the length of your video, not the duration. Now let's take a look at a moving subject. We've got these ducks just chilling in the pool and I'm going to make my frame move with the ducks. Get rid of the end here, bring this back, go back to pan and zoom. So this is, let's go here, pan and zoom, first screen, second screen, let's go to the end which is here. Let's bring the end screen here and I'm just going to comb through and see if my ducks 
are in there at all times. The tail is sticking out, so let's increase the size, increase it a little bit more. And over here it's okay because at the start we're right at the uh, we have these areas. Let me just play this. Let's see how it is. I want to make sure my ducks are in the video at all times. There we go. So the ducks are in there, and now I have a new video that I can work with. You can work with the length of your video to change the speed of this pan and zoom. And that was how you can use cropping and pan and zoom to add motion to your videos. Let's move on to video transformations.